I'm going to play a lick that a friend of mine and I came up with a few years ago at Scooter Wooten, giving a shout out to Scooter. No relationship. We spell our names differently. Long story. But uh, we came up with this lick playing on pads, and it consists of inverted flam taps, flam accents for the first half, and then we're going to cheese those, and then we're going to have a little break with a single stroke roll, a couple stick flips possibly, and then we're going to go into a ratamacue and single drag taps, a combination of those back and forth, and then we're going to back stick the accents. Here is the lick up to tempo. That sounds kind of long. It's a fairly long lick, but it's really just some patterns we're going to show you later. They're not that difficult to learn. Right. Yeah, that lick is a chop fest. I mean, it takes a lot of testosterone and uh, chops to play this lick. However, we're going to learn it slow, and you got to play it slow well before you can pick up the tempo. All right, you might have noticed that I got little things sticking out of my ears. Earplugs. All right, I definitely suggest that you wear these, especially when you're playing inside. This drum is really loud. It's meant for playing on a football field, and I'm inside a room. So it's extremely loud, and I need to make sure I protect my ears. You should too. I'm going to break down the lick, rudiment by rudiment, and that's the easiest way to learn it. There's a, it's written down, it has a time signature, but we're just going to group the rudiments together. Take your rudiments, if you can play a flam accent and inverted flam taps, then you can do this. The first part of the lick is uh, we're going to play flam accent, then an inverted flam tap. Flam accent, then two inverted flam taps. And then it repeats starting on the left and all the stickings reversed. The next section consist of double flams or on one hand. You're going to have a right flam and then another right flam. So I'm going to play a rebound stroke for the first one. Good rudimental drumming is about efficiency. Good drumming. I don't even want to call it rudimental drumming. Just good drumming is about efficiency. So let that stick come back on its own and then hold the second one down. So I'm going to play flam, flam accent, then the left hand, same thing. Flam, flam accent, and then an inverted flam tap. I'm going to end on my left hand. So here's that lick. Flam, flam accent, flam, flam accent, inverted flam tap, left hand. Now I'm going to repeat that sequence starting on the left. So here's the whole thing. All right, so notice the rebound stroke in that rudiment, and then the inverted flam tap, which is a, just a quick flick of the wrist. All right, so that's the first part of this lick. And just think of it in those groups, so flam accent, inverted flam tap, and so forth. So let me play that uh, all put together. So now you want to get that down, get it in your hands, make sure you can play it slow with good, smooth, even technique, and then we're going to cheese it.
take the same exact lick you just played and for every accent you're going to put a diddle. All right, don't force it too hard. You want to pinch a little bit as you get faster just because of the speed, but don't slam the diddles too hard. So here is the same lick with cheese on it. Now, once we have all that down, we've broken it down, we slowed it down, it's time to throw it down. I'm going to put the whole thing together a little faster without the cheese and then with the cheese. This little interlude with the single stroke roll, first the left hand and then single stroke roll is just something I added. You can do whatever you want in that section if you like, or you can go right into the Rademacues if you like. I just put that in there kind of to take a little physical break and then tear up the Rademacues. It's basically what I was doing was uh, just a single hand left bounce and then adding the right hand into a single stroke roll. For me, this is actually perhaps the hardest part of this lick, and that's just the timing, the finger control to get that single stroke roll up really fast. The next part of the lick, the second half, deals with single Rademacues, actually double Rademacues, single Rademacues, and single drags. The first part is a single Rademacue, single drag tap, single Rademacue, then two single drag taps. And then do the same thing off the left. The next part of this lick is two double Rademacues and then a single drag tap. That's two double Rademacues, single drag tap, and then repeat that starting on the left hand. Let me go ahead and do it starting on the right and then continuing to the left. There's, and we put two accents on the double Rademacues. Now notice on that double accent, the first one I'm playing a rebound stroke. It's all about being efficient, remember? I don't want to have to work too hard. If I play it tense, let me play it tense once for you. And this is the way you don't want to practice it because I'm never going to get it up to the speed I want to get it to if I'm playing with tension. All right? I want to take advantage of bounce, but I also want to con concentrate on holding those taps down. So here's, here's a... Uh, Here's how I don't want to practice it. I can physically do it at that tempo with that technique, but eventually as I speed it up, I'm going to hit a wall and I'm done. Okay? Not only is it going to be uneven, it's, it's gonna, I'm, I'm not going to physically be able to play that fast. So here is the whole lick minus the back sticking at a medium tempo. The next part of this lick is basically the same thing, but I'm going to back stick all of the accents. Now let me talk a little bit about backsticking. We want to try to avoid the chicken wing. 
all right? And that is getting your arm out like this. So to avoid that, especially in our left hand, we're going to bring the stick over the rim. Bring it inside, keep the elbow where it is, and then turn it over. I'm not going to go straight over the rim, and I'm going to take it, and I'm not going to leave it in this grip. I'm going to go to a match grip. And maybe uh, you, can, you can change the fulcrum to the back so you're not so far up on the stick. Okay, but you're going to come over this way. Try to keep your elbows still. So when you're back sticking, I don't want my elbows to move a whole lot. I don't want them flapping like this. Okay? I want to try to keep my elbow where it is. I'll be able to play them much faster this way. Okay? And I'm going to go from traditional to a match grip, but fulcrum kind of in the back. With the right hand, I'm going to go over the rim this way. I don't want to go straight over. If I go straight over, you can do it that way. It just takes more time because you have to bring your arm up to clear the rim. This way, I come in and I don't have to move my hand up. It's much, I can play much faster. It's more efficient. So now I'm going to play the whole lick without the back sticking and then with the back sticking at a medium tempo. The Rata McHugh is perhaps technically easier than the inverted flam taps and, and flam accents with the cheese on them, but they do take chops and a lot of testosterone to play them fast, and I really enjoy playing those. And uh, it, it takes practice to get them interpreted right at a slow tempo. Practice everything at a slow tempo and get it down first before you try to pick it up. Here is the whole lick, one more time, up to tempo. I think you'll enjoy playing this, but remember it is more important to get it down technically slow than it is to play it fast, because you really can't play it fast until you get it down slowly. So work on it slow tempos, chunk by chunk, break it down, slow it down, so you can throw it down.
That sucked. <laughs> I knew you were going to fold. All that, and then All it that. sucked. <laughs> Visuals are more important than music. Remember that. 